All right, what's up guys? Before we get into today's video, I've got a huge announcement to share with you guys. I've been invited to be a judge at All Trace in Poland this year. This is a show that has grown immensely over the years uh, throughout my travels in Europe every summer. This is a show that I've always wanted to attend and have not had the opportunity to yet. And Adrian reached out to me and said that they wanted me to be a guest judge this year. So we're going to Poland. We're going to Wrocław, Poland, if I got that right. Wrocław. Us Americans view it as Rokla on the map. We're going to be flying into Germany on June 1st and spending a full week there before the show, which is the 10th and 11th in Poland. And then we'll be headed to England for Players Classic the weekend following. I'm going to be holding some Ludwig's Garage and Governor's Club meets over those three weeks throughout Europe and in England. So I'll be sharing dates and locations of where we're gonna be doing those meets on my Instagram. Hoping to do one in Germany the weekend before I'll trace, probably the third or the fourth, and then one in England the 17th and 18th, probably the night of the 17th during Players Classic weekend. I am truly honored to be invited to be a judge at All Trace this year. Kinda of can't believe it, to be honest. So make sure to follow All Trace on Instagram and see just how insane this show really is. So that's it for now on the Euro trip coming up very soon. We've got so much more work to do on the Porsche in literally just a few days before Alpine Volksfair in Helen, Georgia. So much to do. Let's get on with the episode. We are still in the 11th hour on the Porsche 924S. I am just leaving my friend Perry in Hell's shop. Quick Efforts Garage. Uh, here in Chattanooga, they've been nice enough to let me use their tire machine when I need to mount tires, since I don't have one in my shop yet. So I just brought the BBS RSs over here to mount two new tires and unfortunately dismount two used ones off the Corvair and run two used ones on the front on the Porsche. The second pair of tires are lost in the mail or showing up late. They're not gonna be here until Tuesday next week and we leave Thursday morning for Helen and it's a three hour drive one way. And I have yet to put this car down under its own weight and articulate the suspension. Uh, so I need to be driving this car this weekend. As we speak, it's Thursday. I think this episode, we're gonna see the car go up and down. The car's plumbed, the car's wired. Now we got tires on the wheels. We're getting close. All right, guys, we are home with the wheels and tires. And unfortunately, yep, yeah, all bummer. So the Corvair is basically a workbench and down for the count for the next few days simply because I needed to get tires on the fronts. And as always, when time is of the essence, UPS, FedEx, and everyone else seems to fail you on shipping parts. So I was hoping all four 205 40s would be here so I could mount all four uh, brand new ones. But alas, only two showed up and two are now supposed to be here on Tuesday. And we got to drive this car before then. If the tires show up Tuesday late, Wednesday we're mounting them, Thursday first light we're leaving. I need to drive this car and make sure there's no major issues. So wheels are back on and I've got the car set down to a relative ride height. The front's obviously a little bit taller than the rear right now. But what I'm doing now is I'm tightening all my suspension up, all the control arms, the sway bars. Uh, I loosened all of those up in a previous episode to relieve the bushing tension. And now that I've got the car down sitting where it might be at for most of its ride height, um, I'm going to retighten all the control arms and sway bars so those bushings are basically curb loaded to where they're going to be sitting while driving. And that should allow the car to ride as best as it possibly can with these airbags uh, with front and rear sway bars. All right, so my buddy Andy is here and he's actually going to help me roll the fenders. Andy, oddly enough, owns this shop and house so friend turned landlord but still friend <laughs> so andy actually has a youtube channel it's been a while since you've uploaded uh, six months <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a while in this world um andy's actually been youtubing longer than i have basically he ran everything that was on his channel right here in this shop mostly paint and bodywork stuff. He's got done a whole lot of other stuff. He's building an old Corolla at the moment. Definitely subscribe to his channel. Maybe that'll motivate him to post more, but it should, it should. <laughs> but now that he doesn't have this shop and you're in a much smaller shop now, mm -hmm. I know that makes things a little bit harder. Uh, but Andy is no rookie to rolling fenders. I'd say I'm not either, but I really wanted to get him over here on a Friday evening to hang out, uh, be a part of an episode and do some work on this Porsche since I'd love to include more friends on this project. First of all, before we get started, what do you think of 
the transformation of the shop so far. Like this is not the way you had it laid out. Nowhere near. No, I didn't. I didn't have a lift in the middle of it. Uh, I had a gigantic canopy, uh, like a two-car carport in here that I had a paint booth set up inside in the middle. I mean, there's still paint on the floor. Oh yeah. From paint jobs. Oh yeah. From paint jobs that I've done in the past. It's definitely. Definitely a lot different than it was when I was here. Yeah. There's also shelves in the back, and you took all that stuff out the second you moved in. It's wide open now, where I had a whole lot of stuff in the way. So it's kind of cool. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll add in some photos of the layout. I figured this would motivate him to do more work on his Corolla and uh, post more videos on his channel. I should have brought my camera. <laughs> you should have. All right, so Andy brought some of his bodywork components, and first thing... Is an Eastwood roller. Oh, that's an old one. It's an original. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. like 05 era. Every bit of it. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that logo. And I remember 05, 06 being when like Fender rollers were now like publicly consumable. This was expensive. Yes. Then. And now yes. you can buy them for like 50 bucks. So oh, I think I paid over $400 for this one. That's I why I never bought one way back. Yep. Elliot from 944 Barn told me just this afternoon that these, and I'm looking at it now, they're not wide enough for a 50130 pattern. I'm not sure that's gonna work. Dude, not gonna make it. Wow, not even close. So I think what we're gonna have to do is do it by hand. And as you can see, it's got a little bit more of a lip than the front. The front almost came with like a factory roll. It's quite crazy how tight the front is. Um, this one, we're gonna start with just cleaning all the grime and dirt that's uh, in the back there. I've seen your comments. I know that I should have started with an episode of just pressure washing the undercarriage of this car. All right, so what we're doing first is we've just got some wire brushes and we're going through the top of the fender lip where all the dirt and gunk accumulates. Because if you want to fold that up, you're obviously going to be squishing in on a bunch of dirt and you won't get a fold that you want. It'll make an impression of the the dirt on the outside of the car. Yeah, especially so, if you start hammering. Yeah, it'll, you'll see a big dent. And then it also promotes rust and all sorts of other stuff too. So. Yeah, because moisture will accumulate and stay. And... Yeah, so we want to get all that stuff out of there. Yeah. That there is the pile of dirt that just came out of the rear fender lips on both sides. And we're trying to go fender right on the lip of the tire, or lip of the wheel rather. Just gotta get down over that rim protector. So a good tight roll. Right, guys we are pulling the front bumper while andy's working on the rear fender arches we don't have any time to spare on this car in the next few days before we leave for helen so i decided to start working on the front bumper tuck that's what we're doing because the front of these cars were horrendous for how far out that front bumper stuck and that's where the mount was so what we're going to do is we're going to do the crudest most straightforward fix a lot of you guys have done this too is we're about to drill out the shocks and compress it and remount it. And it's, a, it's an incredible transformation. It really is. Okay, so rule number one, if you're gonna start a YouTube channel and you're doing stuff anywhere, film. Because we just put the bumper shock in the drill press. Wasn't sure how much pressure this was gonna be under. So I moved to an eighth inch bit, real small. And I thought for sure I was recording. And I wasn't and just took an oil bath thing sprayed out and got everywhere <laughs> got oil everywhere and andy was like you sure you're filming i'm like yeah it's rolling and then i looked and it wasn't recording so we got one more to do not that bad but um it is under pressure so for any of you guys that are going to do this it's been 10 years since i've drilled out a bumper shock andy got both rears to a decent looking roll so we're going to set this thing down and we'll see how far down we can get to the lip of the wheel Mmm, boy. I don't think it's touching. I think it's just I might not be. not letting it go down low enough. Oh, you know what? It might be there. I just need to crank the 
collars down. Yeah. So basically what we're looking at here is the fender clearing the rim protector of the tire. Uh, but what's holding it up right now is the body of the rear strut assembly. So I can basically crank that down to get another half inch to set that thing down. All right, so we've cranked the rears up a little bit. Didn't film any of that, but um, we got the rears cranked up. So the rears should go a bit lower. We've, we've been up and down a few times now, and I think this might be it. We're free of the lift. Give her a little bit of a push. Oh man. I just gotta crank it a few more so the weight of the car will like sit on the lift. We're gonna hit the whip on this one or what? It ought to go. Oh boy. Does that side look somewhat? The other side's touching. Yeah, it's, yeah. that's as good as it gets. Couldn't even fit a business card between that. No. Nope. I'd say we did it. We did it too. <laughs> You've been chit chatting the whole time with that thing in your head. We've been, yeah, but I talked to myself. We've been chit chatting about the setup and the roof height of the car when it's all the way aired out, and, and we've been laughing about stuff. And I just realized, like, I need to be filming this. I don't have any friends here in the shop ever. This is, I really appreciate all of your guys' support because this is probably a pretty boring YouTube channel as far as characters go. I don't have any friends normally on the channel. All right, guys, it's the next morning. Basically just getting back to it. Still have a lot to do on the car. Before the end of this episode, gonna try to get management charged up. Gonna finish tightening all the suspension up. And kind of sidetracked last night on starting the front bumper tuck, but that was only to continue moving along while Andy was working on rolling the rear fenders. So since I started this last night, we're gonna finish it. We're gonna do that. Um, I thought maybe this would be incorporated in another episode leading up to when we leave for Helen here in a few days, but gonna throw it all together probably just for the sake of time and editing. All right, so I just went outside and used a couple blocks and my three pound mallet and just hammered it in. The key was to drilling a larger hole to let all of the fluid uh, drain out. All right, so I'm close to getting this side in and what I noticed is you've gotta notch the bumper for the tow hook right here. You can see it touching right there. So all I really have to do is just make a little bit of a notch right there so it can slide over the tow hook because I'm not gonna mess with the tow hook. I'm not gonna take that off. All right guys, we got the bumper on. That was much more of a task than I was expecting it to be and took way longer than I really needed it to take. The 924S is a totally different tow hook, front frame horn setup than a regular 924 and a 944. So I had to trim quite a bit away right here. I still want to tuck the rear bumper. That may not be in this episode, but boy oh boy does that front bumper look so much better. This angle right here, man. Without the bump strips, it looks even better, but there are holes behind it, so I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. The bump strips don't really kill me. So this was a win. This made the front end look so much better. We're gonna do the back here in another episode before Helen. We are on the floor. We're off the lift, we're on all four wheels. I aired it down for the first time last night. The compressor wasn't turning on. When I first turned the system on, everything worked as it should. Um, the controller was able to articulate every corner uh, of the suspension, all the bags held air, tank held air. Um, I put air in the tank from the shop compressor here because I have a Schrader valve on the tank. But the compressor wouldn't kick on and I've spent all day today going through my wiring, making sure everything was wired correctly. I got a separate relay, made sure the relay was good, had a test light back there, making sure everything was good. And it came down to voltage at the battery. I had my battery charger on the battery when I first turned the system on, just to kind of help give the battery an extra boost to emulate the alternator turning basically. The charger was supposed to emulate that. So I started the car and the second the alternator started charging the battery, the compressor kicked on. I just pulled an alignment. Kayla helped me hold some plates while I just did a tape measure alignment just to make sure we're good for the drive to Helen. I'm super happy with this thing, so happy with it. Brakes are bled. I think we're about ready to back it outside the shop and we all will see this for the first time because I have not had this thing outside the garage yet. Excited to see it next to Kayla's 944 as well since they're both on RS's, both 924, 944 platform cars. 
Let's go. I'm excited. Right, guys this is it it's finally outside this thing looks so crazy in person the 16s with small tires but also laying out like oil pan is on the ground when you lay the thing out and it just looks so crazy the rockers almost lay out but it doesn't have that squatted like broken look to it at least not in person it's hard to describe but it still looks fast aired out the biggest fear of this whole thing was to basically air it out and it look broken or squatted or just not good, really. And I think we avoided that. It still has a little bit of forward rake. Guys, I'm so stoked. This, this was looking like a scary day with the compressor not turning on. The right front wheel is leaking. Uh, I must have not sealed it as well as the other three. Um, so unfortunately tomorrow, I've got to go back to Perry shop and dismount that tire, reseal the wheel, make sure there's no cracks or anything like that. I wanna give a huge thanks again to Bag Riders for coming on board with this project. This wouldn't have been possible without them. So huge thanks to those guys for constantly supporting the shop and the YouTube channel. Remember to go to bagriders.com and use code Ludwix at checkout. That'll get you a discount on anything that they offer for your car from suspension to even wheels. We still got a lot to do, but the major hurdles have been overcome. We leave in about three days for Helen. So it is still very much a mad dash to get all this stuff done. Well, that's it for this episode, guys. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate all of you guys and all of your support. We'll see you in the next episode.